Hello and welcome to this new video where it's all about film grain and original film grain that you can create from your original images, analog images or from scratch in Capture One and that you can then use in Photoshop as adjustment layer for maximum flexibility and uh, for your best results when it comes to composings and adding film grain to your images. This video is created since Earth reached out through Instagram. So thank you very much for connecting and I hope you find value in this video. And if so, please let me know. And here we go with the first steps that we have to take. So if we go to Photoshop, you can see that there's just a plain white solid background layer. And the first thing that we need to do is create a neutral gray. And uh, we are going to do that by pushing shift delete and it brings up this dialog and we fill it with 50% gray. That's the first thing that we need to do. And then we save it um, as a TIFF file, real film grain, gray background TIFF. And from here, we are switching over to Capture One, which is my raw conversion software of choice. And we flip over and we are going to import that grain layer that we just created. And now we have got this film grain option here. Uh, if you don't see it, you can hold down control, push into this empty area, add the tool film grain. If you don't have Capture One as a software, you can go to the website of captureone.com and you can download a 30 day free trial. So check it out if you don't already use it. Um, now that being said, we can now apply a ton of film grain options, which is perfect to uh, have the results that we are looking for. Um, for demonstrational purposes, I will just go with cubic grain. I will increase the impact I will increase the granularity a bit so that we can see some effect. Uh, the, the strength and the um, overall appearance of the grain is perfectly personal choice. So you can just go for whatever you feel like. You can create multiple versions and then uh, bring them into Photoshop with the tools and techniques that I will show you. Um, so if the settings are cool for you, um, you can then export this image. You can push this button and it will send it right to Photoshop. We can put it right next to the image. And now we see that we have this beautiful grain here, the structure. So what we have to do next is to create a frequency separation to separate the structure uh, from the image. And that, if you don't know how it's done, uh, you can quickly do by duplicating the background layer twice pushing Command or Apple J twice. You name the upper one H for high, high frequency, and you name the lower one L for low frequency. Next step is to going to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and let's go for something like 15 pixels to really blur out the whole structure. You then activate the high layer again. You go to Image, Calculations, and the you can choose the low layer here and the merge layer here. You have 100% opacity. The blending mode has to be subtract and the offset is 128, the scale is two. Click okay. You then can delete the low layer. You can delete the background layer. We don't have use for that anymore. And the next step is that we create uh, a selection, a rectangle selection, square selection, pushing M for the selection tool. We go for a fixed size, which uh, are like straight numbers. It's 2000 pixels and we go for the same dimension and the height, 2000 pixels, pushing in uh, the middle of the image and then we can go for image crop. Now we have that square selection that we need to create a uh, pattern in Photoshop to be able to have an adjustment layer. Um, since there is the possibility that we might have cut one of the film grain elements here in half at the edge of the image, we have to do one more thing, which is going to filter other offset. And now we will move the image 1000 pixels to the right and 1000 pixels down. 
if you take a look in the preview, you can see that it, the pixels are jumping. And that is exactly what we want to do to create a new uh, edge to the image. Uh, the, the mode that you can select is wrap around. Push OK. And now we can make a selection of all of this, pushing the command A, go to edit and define pattern. We can call that, for example, like this, or we can call it capture one film grain, film grain one, so that you know where, uh, where to find it and uh, that you have a proper name for it. So now we have the option to go to an image that we uh, have finalized already and make sure to check this one out. It's uh, by my friend Per Florian Appelgren and uh, we recently did this for a campaign or a fashion editorial that was published in Harper's Bazaar. And uh, if you follow my channel, you will definitely see uh, a full retouch on that image if you like. We also plan to go live for it, so um, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell if you want to be notified when I'm going live for retouching this image. And you're welcome to join and ask questions or just hang out and have a good time. All right, uh, what we can do now is go to uh, our adjustment layer menu down here and we can bring up the pattern dialog and then we can choose the one that we just created, which is this one. And now we can apply it and you can see that it has this beautiful noise pattern, film grain pattern uh, now that we can bring into the image by selecting a blend mode. We can start off with soft light, which is, if I zoom to 100%, it's a rather soft effect by 100% opacity. If you want to have something that is a little stronger, you can go to overlay and you can see that it introduces this uh, grain nicely into the image. If you want a really strong effect, you can go to linear light, but that again is completely flexible and up to you using this technique. For demonstration purposes, I will leave it with overlay. And now what you can do is you can double click this uh, and you can then take out the, the grain from the highlight. You can move it to the right and then hold option and move this slider slightly to the left side. And you can see what it does. It takes out the grain out of the lighter areas, which would be uh, what it <clears throat> would appear if it would be original shot. So we hit okay. And now we can see that it has this beautiful effect to the image. The great thing is that you can apply these uh, patterns to all sorts of images. And what you also can do is by hitting, uh, by double clicking this layer icon, you can scale up the grain by multiple percentages. Uh, you can like go over the top with this, but you can also make it slower. Uh, you can also make it smaller I wanted to say a 50% or you can go to, well, let's say 150% depends on the size of the image. And um, by this you have complete flexibility. Another great example where this uh, pattern adjustment layer comes in really handy is if you have, uh, let's say uh, an image, like if you work on a campaign image, that is like the key visual and you have to make, you have to create some format adaption or like uh, some, some new uh, angles and perspectives. You uh, might have the situation that you retouch an image, you have a beautiful noise on it, you beautiful grain and you need to extend the background. So let's make a little demo here. Um, if, we, if we go for uh, a color like that, you can see the effect pretty nicely, I think. Um, so we will bring up the adjustment layer again, the pattern that we just created. And we can select, for, again, for demonstration purposes, a really high effect. Let's go with this. And just imagine that you have to make a white format now out of this. So you can see that the 
grain layer, the adjustment layer, seamlessly adjusts to the new format. You can then fill the background again with the color you wish, or you can extend the composing or whatever you're just working on to this new format, and the grain seamlessly adjusts to it, which is, in my case, uh, a must that I have the complete flexibility when I work on images. So now um, we can also, let's do it again. Let's create a, a new format. If we go from here to like a portrait mode, it has the same effect. And this is uh, really, really useful when it comes to um, work with grain and patterns. So, all right, I'm glad you spent some time with me at the Wacom board today. And if you found some value in this and you would like to see more of uh, these kind of videos, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the little bell so you're notified when there's a new video coming up. Also, if you would like to give me some feedback, that's much appreciated. Please just write some comments in the section below or send me uh, a message on Instagram at Jan Bischermann. And now I wish you happy retouching. My name is Jan, signing out. Peace.